Facebook Live is starting up here. And with us this afternoon for the Saturday conversation, we have um, Ariana and we have William from, we have Ariana and we have William from uh, Mills on Wheels. They're going to be here with us today. And they've got some great, great, great information. But how's it going, guys? Going great. Good, sir. Thank you for having <laughs> us. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. So, um, um, if you guys have been, it seems like a long time since March. Right? Seems like uh, we've gone like uh, I mean, just like at light speed, and it's amazing that twenty twenty one is almost over. But 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 you guys have, have throughout all of these things, everyone's had all kinds of problems and trials and tribulations and things that are going on, and you guys have managed to um, stay the course, continue feeding people. No one has gotten sick because of receiving meals on the wheels. Right. So tell me some of the things that you guys did before we talk about the big news. How did you guys make it through these last six months or seven months, whatever it's been? Well, I mean, the first thing is, you know, we all look at each other in the room and say, you know, I think we're smart enough. I think we're dedicated enough. I think we're willing enough to try to make it work. Right. And um, with a little imagination and a little creativity, you know, you can do a lot of cool things. And so we're blessed to have tremendously talented people throughout the organization and so we just sat down we're like hey we got to do more we got to do it better we got to do it differently but we're going to do it and from there you just you know you just start walking that path we you all know? and i mean of course we also knew we had to keep doing what we were doing the people who we were serving needed us before they definitely right. needed us right. during they still need us now um making sure that they were well fed during this time like having that proper nutrition during this time is that much more important because you want to make sure that you're at the top of your health if you get sick like right. you got to be in good in good shape in case you get sick so that way you can get better and um and so we knew it was just as important to be there for people and to be there for more people as needed and that's something that we were able to do as well um Partly, partly due to Will's ability to be very pivotal, we were we were able to turn on a dime for lots of groups and help some groups by getting them like shelf stable meal boxes and things like that, and bringing other groups on in terms of getting them meal delivery and meals like in bulk at times. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of just been amazing at what happens when a group just puts its head down and says, "We got to keep doing this, and we got to do more." and we did it, and we're still doing it, and we're not stopping. Like nothing no, is stopping. well, what's amazing is even the food bank had to slow down, but you guys did. And how how did you maintain that? Um, it's two different two different organizations. Two different organizations, different organizations absolutely, absolutely, doing two different things. Um, yeah, very different. But, but we've got some. It's a community. San Antonio is such a great community. Right. It's a giving. It's a willing. It's a motivated community. And every time we have needed a little bit of extra, there's been a little bit of extra. And man, I just the sheer determination of force to want to do something, I mean, can mean a lot. And then they believe in us. We believe in them. We know what we want to do. We know what our mission is. And, boy, I tell you what, you get enough people in the room moving towards the same way. It well, it takes, it takes leadership. It takes and kudos to you and in your, in your team because it does. It, take, it takes leadership. It takes consistency, transparency, all of those things that um, we see missing sometimes today. But, but you guys have have really, really um, just been a standard bearer as far as that goes. So I really, really commend you guys. All right, I got to ask you this. What about the animals? The <laughs> animals are still getting fed. All we right. are feeding lots of them. Yeah. Um, it takes, um, I think we're feeding about 500 animals a month right now. Oh, my goodness. Yes, 500 cats and dogs. We're still we're still focusing on cats and dogs. Right, right. Um, we are still very fortunate enough to be receiving donations. Awesome. Still have volunteers going out and and delivering that food on a monthly basis. None of that is stopping. The animals are still mm -hmm. getting getting the attention and nutrition that they need, so that the people that we're serving can still have their furry friends, their furry family members, I should say. Well, they're really families. important because if they're you're yeah. locked down and quarantined <laughs> or whatever, and you've got a pet, I yeah. mean that's your family. No, yeah. for sure, absolutely, and. Um, Honestly, if we had more food coming in and uh -huh. more volunteers to deliver it, we would be able to say yes to more people who, who need it. That's what we hear all the time from the coordinator. So if people want to donate more food or volunteer to deliver it, they should definitely let us know or um, go online and, and start delivering or donating food. <laughs> it's, it's 
still as easy as it was when we were doing it with the Girl <laughs> Scouts, honestly. So now, so now, the some of your procedures had to have changed with COVID and all that, those types of things. Yeah. So, um, and it used to be prior to the pandemic, you were kind of a contact, uh, uh, a one-on-one kind of contact, making sure. Uh, that people had. I mean, they, they they look forward to the meals, but they look forward to the companionship as well. Just as much. So, so how 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 have you been able to bridge that gap? Or we're that still gap? doing it, but we're just doing it at a safe distance. Oh wow! So we still have folks that go to the doors, volunteers, staff, drivers, and we still deliver the meal. We still deliver that that interaction. We just do it from a safe distance. We don't want to put them at risk. Right. We don't want them to put us at risk, so we can all continue to keep working. Absolutely. Yeah. But we still do it, and we still have conversations, and we still reach out to them. We still call all the clients every week. We still wow. get in there and say, hey, maybe we can't do everything we want to do, but how can we do something for you? So those conversations wow. still happen every time. Yeah, and we do it We do it for the um, clients when we're going to them, and we're doing it with the volunteers to make sure that the volunteers are safe and that they're safe for when they go to the clients. What is amazing is, like, you know, Texas – and it's a great state, the great state of Texas. But it is a social service desert. I mean, the mm-hmm. state does nothing for anyone. And it's just amazing. That's why I, I do these shows, because just like I get amazed every every Saturday. Someone comes in and just do the kindness of their heart and the hard work and their efforts. And it makes such a huge, huge, huge difference. There are some some places where people are really, really, really um, having it, having their heart going during these times. So once again, I commend you. Okay, and that's, I'm sure, all of the stuff we just talked about had a lot to do with <laughs> the good news that when I saw the press release, right. I, I felt I almost jumped out of my office chair because <laughs> I was so, so pleased. And I mean, there's not a more deserving um, group. Why don't you tell us a little bit about us, William? Um, so we are honored and privileged and incredibly humbled to be able to provide senior nutrition program support for the senior centers of San Antonio. And that'll start 1 January. It is a demographic. It's a group of people that we are very passionate about. We love to serve seniors. We love to do everything senior related and to have a chance, just an opportunity to get in there and show the product and the service that we are very passionate about. We're humbled. We're truly humbled. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been delivering lunch to seniors for over 40 years in San Antonio. But not at the senior centers. Not at the senior centers. Not to all of the senior centers. We have been delivering meals for congregate like which are senior centers uh-huh. in San Antonio for a few years to Grasp and um, Kirby senior centers. And um, we're just glad that we can provide lunch for all of the seniors who attend senior centers in San Antonio starting in January. Um, we we are really looking forward to, to giving them really tasty food um, that's freshly prepared in our kitchens, exactly what we do for the clients that we serve every day. That is so awesome. I saw some of the pictures that they took during the announcement. Yeah. You guys look like you were having too much fun, too I much mean, fun. I mean, it's, it's one of those things. It was one of the first in-person council meetings, uh-huh. like, yeah. since all of this right, right. started. Um, like we, we took a selfie because <laughs> like we wanted a group picture, but it's like, do you ask someone to take a picture? I don't know. Like what do you do? Everything's just different Everything's these different. days. Right. Everything's different. So, um, yeah, it was just an exciting moment. Um, I think we took up half the available seats yeah, yeah. in the, in the chambers, <laughs> um, cause there were only so many available because That's of right, social, social distancing. Social distancing. That's right. Yeah, it was, it was kind of incredible, but I mean, we got there early and, and it was, it was just really exciting to see the vote take place and, and have them like say our name and, and know it was, it was happening and, and know, okay, all these plans that we've kind of been making are are real. I mean, Will's been in the room where they've been talking about this over and over again. For a while, happen. yeah. And now, like, it's, like, ink to paper and, yeah. like, it's feet all... to the ground. It's, like, got to get those boots on the ground and make stuff start happening, so. So, now, I think I saw the number, and I could be wrong because I'm getting older. Oh. 700,000 additional meals? It could be. It could be a little bit more. Oh, it my God. On That's annually. Yeah. Well, that... I would hope so. <laughs> And I'll, I'll that's tell just you, your normal Sunday meal. We <laughs> really hope that that number skyrockets up because we hope that the experience is so good that more people will want to visit their senior centers, have yeah. more interaction, have more socialization, mm-hmm. and just have a better overall experience in their environment. Well, the senior centers are a great resource. They 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 really are. I mean, if, if I didn't have a family, I mean, I'd probably be there every day. You know, I mean, well, you can play pool. There's people to talk to. I mean, it's it's a great great resource, and I am 
old enough to qualify finally. But <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't so believe it. <laughs> so, but so um, I, I appreciate that. So, but for seven hundred thousand, or it could be, could be eight hundred, could be a million. Okay. That's a lot of additional um, hours, preparation, mm -hmm. uh, logistics, and, and how are you gonna how are you gonna handle all of that? Well, we didn't just figure this out yesterday. Mm -hmm. We have been planning for this for almost a year. Mm -hmm. We have been laying the groundwork and the structural foundation and the organizational foundation to be able to do this and not do it, but to do it well. To execute it well. And to give them everything that our homebound seniors get every day. Which is pretty darn good. Which is, we think is pretty darn good. Okay. <laughs> I've seen them, they're pretty darn good. <laughs> and so uh, we're passionate about it. And I think that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. um, we're willing. Mm -hmm. and. I, I'll never be able to stress enough. We have got such dynamic folks in this organization for at every level, at every job that just are, want to do it. So did you relocate? Do you have a different place? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we're, we're getting well, it's kind of like, how are you going to do all those meals in the same space and you're already kind of space constrained somewhat? Right. Um, the good thing is we are not at capacity currently and we haven't been. Mm -hmm. oh, um, okay. So there was opportunity to do more. Okay. Um, and so to expand the capacity and to produce more of what we're going to do structurally is not a, is not an issue. Okay. So we're, we're comfortable with that. Okay. Having said that, boy, we are super excited if, to be a new big soon. If we were in another place, being able to serve more would be just that much easier. Um, <laughs> see, that's why she does what she does. Mm -hmm. She knows those <laughs> carefully measured words there. <laughs> I mean, and, and like that's the reality of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because right, right. it's not about just serving more people in the senior centers. We know San Antonio has been lucky, and we've been really young for a really long time. Mm -hmm. But we've become that much more attractive to people who are retiring. They're moving here. They may not be moving here with people who are going to take care of them. Right. And they may find themselves in need of the services you provide. Right. And we want to be able to make sure that those people's needs are met. And we figure San Antonio will eventually need more of what we're doing. And we want to be okay. there for them. And so at some point, we do need to be somewhere else where we can do more for all of San Antonio. Wow. And beyond San Antonio. I mean, we don't just serve in Bear County. Right, right. We serve in additional counties. And we don't just deliver to additional counties. Like, we prepare meals and we give them to other programs like ours in a couple of additional counties as well. My so gosh. if we want to continue to be able to help like that, then the space the space at some point, we will definitely outgrow where we are and need to be somewhere else so we can we can keep doing that. Like, like we would all love to probably, you know, call 410 and Babcock home forever because <laughs> we all have that, you know, address memorized. Oh, yeah. It's so easy to say where <laughs> oh, we yeah. are. I love telling people where we are, but at some point, like, it's those walls aren't going to be able to, like, contain us if we want to be able to have more volunteers come through or more cars deliver meals or more trucks deliver meals. We can only park so many vehicles there. Sometimes it's hard for employees to find right, a place right. to park. So now, so now we've got, you know, you're ready, you got everything structurally, you got it all done, and all this additional, this additional um, um, privilege uh, to, to help more people to senior, senior uh, centers. So are, are you hiring more employees or? We will. We'll, we'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll start that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're always looking for, for quality folks. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're always looking for high aptitude, willing, caring, passionate mm -hmm. people, you know, to, to fill the ranks of okay. Meals on Wheels. And we will need to take on some additional folks. And we have been lucky to have those kind of folks in our right. building always. Fantastic. It's just something about the mission that draws a certain type mm -hmm. of person. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, more people do more great things. People who are willing to ask questions, learn more, wear different hats. If you're, if you're all of those things and you're motivated, like, you get it done, then we're happy to have you. So now tell me, what is it that you guys, are you guys going to have an um, annual fundraiser now this year? Okay, so what we have been looking at what we normally have an annual luncheon and mm -hmm. that got canceled because right. of COVID. We did have sponsors who had already signed on though and had already donated their money and we were very fortunate that they were kind enough to allow the pivoting of those funds to be redirected towards our response to COVID because some of those responses required some different funding streams, Absolutely. obviously. Absolutely. 
Um, so we're looking at what we're going to do for that next year. Um, we've got some ideas that I don't want to give away because we're oh, excited excited about what they oh, might wow. be. Oh, wow. All right. Um, <laughs> of course, you'll get it. You'll be on the invite list if you want right. to attend I... or virtually attend, whatever, well, however how it is, it's going to work. <laughs> um, we know lots of people are doing lots of different things. So we're also kind of taking taking a look at what's working mm -hmm. for different people in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Um, Because every, every city is different, right, with what works uh -huh. in San Antonio especially. Um, so we're just, we're taking a look at that. We've been fortunate though, that people, the individuals who give have continued to give, um, people give to us monthly, like you can set it and forget it kind of like, Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. You can use your credit card and say you want to give monthly and whether it's $10 or a hundred dollars or more than that, if you want, I mean, basically $5 covers the cost of a meal for a day for somebody, um, that's what, I don't know, somebody's coffee at Starbucks. Like, well, that's right. That's it's, right. Yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing. You can provide nutrition, a friendly visit, and a safety check for someone with that money instead. Wow. It's, it's, not, it's not a small thing that you're doing when you give. And when you give on a monthly basis, it just it, it adds up like with anything else. And um, we still really appreciate the individual support. And so we're looking at just kind of like what we think will work. Nothing's gone away. And we're just going to adapt. We're going to keep adapting. We've been adapting this whole time, so nothing is set in stone. Well, but you know what? That's that's how you have to be. You have to be open to change. Yeah. Um, and things are going to be different. Even when this is done and, you know, a year from now, whenever it might be, uh, things are just going to be different. The mm -hmm. things that we used to be able to do, we're not going to be able to do anymore. And, and who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? So so I really applaud you guys and in, 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 in being open because change is... Uh, something that uh, most people don't react too well to, so, <laughs> especially when it's pretty frequent, uh, Tate. So, um, so for people to want to want to contribute or become donors and things, best way to do that is? M-O-W-S-A-T-X.org. Awesome, awesome. And we've got a donate button in the upper right-hand corner. Mm -hmm. And if you click on that, it takes you to our donate page and you can choose what level you want to give at. Mm -hmm. and. If you want to give monthly, you can make that selection as well, and you enter your information, and it's that easy. If you want to donate via um, Cash App mm -hmm. or Venmo, uh -huh. you can do that too. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> our handle is M-O-W-S-A-T-X, <laughs> just like our website. <laughs> um, and also, you can donate through Facebook if you're on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty easy to find us on Facebook, um, or Meals on Wheels San Antonio. And... Um, Facebook gives everything to us. They don't charge any fees there either. No, Facebook is really good with that. They're, they're not profits. They're, they're awesome. They're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been some amazing people out there who use their birthdays to do fundraisers. So if someone wants to start a fundraiser for us and, and you know, get some money sent our way that way too, that's amazing. Um, but, yeah, or if, if you don't want to do it online, you can always call our number during the weekday. Our offices are open, like, about 7.30 to 4, um, most days someone will be there to answer the phone. And that number is 210-735-5115. Um, 210-735-5115. Yep, that's, that's faster than I could say. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're, happy, we're happy to help you with that over the phone as well. Awesome. Yeah. So I got to tell you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, folks out there, um, there is not a more worthy um, um, organization to contribute to the Meals on Wheels of San Antonio. They're a fantastic organization. They're extremely well run. They're very fiscally sound. Um, and, and, and the money that you donate, the things that you donate actually goes to help individuals who are in need. And don't forget about the animals. If you got cat food or dog food, they'll also take that. And there's a place you can drop it off uh, that's probably at the we're, we're taking it yep. at Babcock and 410 okay. now, mm -hmm. yeah, because um, you've got people there. That's where the people are. And so okay. we appreciate it, all of it. It's, it's easy, drop it off, and um, yeah, new unopened bags of dog food, cat food, anything, <laughs> we'll take it. Well, Will True Love, yes, Ariana Babor, thank you so, so, so very much for coming today. Thanks for all that you do. The city of San Antonio thanks you. Stay safe. And you notice, guys, they had their mask on the entire time. So, <laughs> Dr. Doug here with you, Carol B. FM, the heart and soul of San Antonio. We'll be back in just a few moments.
has another button. That thing is gonna make sure I hit the right thing.